And he's way in the studio. He's made his way right here on 5FM. His name is Shane Eagle. That tune featuring Big Star Johnson, way up on 5FM. We finally have him in studio, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Are we even worthy? <laughs> Playing the classic stuff. Thank yes, you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. You know, we got to make sure we give you a nice warm welcome, you know? Dope Before we drop all the brand new, brand new, brand new. Yes, sir. Um, yes, welcome, Shane. Um, I don't think I've actually interviewed you in the studio. No. No, we just did the one performance when yeah. you had just dropped Yellow. Yeah. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. it's been a, a long time since you dropped Yellow. Uh, obviously, yeah. you did Never Grow Up now. Dark Moon Flowers out. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling about the growth? How are you feeling about how the music has changed? How are you feeling about this new person that you've mm-hmm. blossomed into? Sometimes it even, you know, shocks me. Really? But it's more just like I've had that idea of where I want to be. Uh-huh. So to just see it like come to life is like, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 indeed, indeed. So Dark Moon Flower is out. It is a mixtape, mm-hmm. not an album. Mm-hmm. It's I, lo- a mix I love tape. the fact that you know that. Yeah. Oh, I have to know these things. Otherwise, I'm not doing my job correctly. You know what I mean? Um, It is a mixtape. Go out there and obviously check it out. But um, you've obviously been making a lot of waves with regards to this brand new music. Why specifically a mixtape and not an album? Because I haven't dropped a mixtape yet. Okay. You know, so I dropped my debut album, Yellow, Mm -hmm. before I even had a chance to drop a mixtape. Okay. You know, and it's part of, you know, as a... MC. Yes. You have to have the mixtape, you know? Yes. But I, I got my debut out the way, dropped the young EP, and then I'm dropping my mixtape. Mm-hmm. And also, it's a mixtape because of all the types of features, yes. how I approached it, you know? Okay. I approach albums differently. Really? Mm. How so? Because this actually sounds like an album, even though you say it's a mixtape. Yeah, everybody's been saying <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that you would approach an album differently? Mm. It's just like the, what I like the process of okay. making it. Like with a mixtape, it's more so boom, boom, I get these beats in, mm-hmm. rap on them, try and like make good songs of them, and then that's what it is. Yes. With an album, I'm more finicky. Okay. You know, with what makes it, what features, what songs. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. So I approach, I approach both of them differently, but this okay. is definitely a mixtape. Was this, was this more fun for you to create? Because you were obviously working with different people you hadn't worked mm. with before. Over and above that, it's also, like you're saying, because it's a mixtape, there's less pressure. Yeah, but at the same time, I, I approach it the same way. So there's always pressure, mm-hmm. but it's just how I approach the project is different, you know. But ah. there's still that pressure of, yo, this needs to be perfect. This song needs to, you know, even my arrangement. Yes. Yeah, all that stuff. And selecting the right features as well. Mm. So clearly, you're still in an album mode, but, you know, you're giving us a mixtape. I feel like Shane, we are shy, shy. But nonetheless, uh, if you have any comments for the homie, like I said, you can hit us up on Twitter. You can hit us up on the WhatsApp line, 0825505151. This is a special song that I saw him perform live at Rocking the Daisies. We didn't expect him to jump on that stage, but woo, blew us away. Paris featuring Nasty C. Turn it out, turn it out. There you have it. That is Shane Eagle featuring Nasty C on 5FM. What a banger. Uh, I'm sure you also kind of saw the heat on social media when you dropped that song. Yeah. Huh? And the video is coming. Ooh, we're quite it's excited. Coming. We're quite excited. And everyone was just like, you? Mm-hmm. That song? <laughs> Well, you guys were just going like bar for bar in the studio. You were like, okay, we're coming with the heat, no matter what happens. You know you know what actually happened? Um, my producer, he's also part of Eagle Entertainment. His name's KK. Yeah. He cooked the beat. He sent me the beats, and it was just slapping. Yes. I laced my stuff, 
And I was like, there's something missing. Initially, um, J.I.D. from Dreamville was meant to be on the song with mm. me and, and uh, Nasty. And then I just, I'm keeping that stuff for like something separate. So I thought this was, you know, the two the two young boys come together and mm-hmm. do something for the country, you know, so. And you've never worked with Nasty before? I have. I have. Uh-huh. Uh, we did that, um, uh, what was that? I want it all. Oh yeah, that we just, yeah, yeah, the feature. The, yeah. And then we 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 were you know meant to work, but things take yes, time. Yes, you know? things take time. But obviously they came together at the right time for that one. Mm-hmm. Really dope single on that. So obviously Thank you've you. done a lot of really dope features on this album as well. Um, what kind of goes into your feature selection? Because obviously you've got the likes of Nasty C, you've got Patrick XX Lee, which I didn't expect if I must, right. <laughs> if I must be Fire. honest. Uh, I'm a fan of his. I just didn't expect him on your album if yeah. I must be serious. Uh, obviously you've got the likes of Bass on there as well. How did you kind of put it all together since you're so technical about it? You see, even though I'm very technical about how I approach this stuff, mm. all the features have to be organic. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of people say that, but I really mean that. Mm. Like we have to have linked like somewhere. Like for instance, with Patrick, I never even really heard of Patrick XX Lee. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I wasn't, I didn't hear about him, you know, until we actually met at a show. Uh, we both had a show in Cape Town and he was also booked. Mm. And that's when I met, you know, the kid for the first time. And I was like, okay, and we got to kick it. And I was like, okay, you dope, you know? That's how we met. Same thing with most of the Dreamville artists. I went on tour with them. Yeah. Um, the Hicks, they from the UK. They, yeah. My favorite features, I met them in Paris. Okay. Uh, you know, so most of these artists, um, I just met organically and we had a, you know, cook. And at the same time, all of these artists who are featured are like my favorite, favorite artists like in the world That must world be right so now. mind-blowing for you because now you're at a point where you're literally just, okay, you're this kid from, you know, Johannesburg, South mm-hmm. Africa, just trying to get by like right. everybody else. And now you're touring Europe, you're touring um, Europe with some of the biggest artists in the world. Um, your connection with Bass obviously kind of unlocks some of these features for you mm-hmm. as well. Please tell us about your relationship with the Dreamville Cats. Mm-hmm. My relationship with Dreamville is um, with with the artists in Dreamville. It's just a solid one because it was just based off like real fundamentals. You know, they Mm. got to know me as a person before, you know, they understood the music. And um, and like I was saying this before, how a lot of things are actually unlocking for me is because one of the things that I, I think as African people, we need to change is is when people kind of get to a, a a position of power they don't want to help the people at the bottom get yes. on it's like i'd rather keep all these opportunities for myself yeah now the dudes when dreamville and stuff they kind of like if they have a resource that you need they just open it for you you know what i'm saying mm. if they can hear you working on a project and it's like yo this project needs metro booming or this project needs someone you know they give you that number it's like nice. yo, you know ebro's my boy speak to ebro you know yeah they, they, yeah. they like that so I think it, it was just organic and obviously, you know, my music um, resonates with them as well. So you ha- always have to start with the art first. Yeah. Make sure the music is quality, even if no one's listening and everyone will be Yes, like, yes, yes. Yeah, going, going on tour in Europe was life changing. I can imagine. Which was your best, well, your, well, your favorite country sure. that you'd gone to? Uh, I was in Germany. Really? Yeah. Why specifically Germany? two reasons the first reason is one of my favorite artists frank ocean Mm -hmm. had performed at that same venue like not so long before we got there oh wow so i was like okay frank ocean had graced this stage he's my favorite artist that's Mm. dope to do it and then second thing is that venue was like what do they say about that venue is like the craziest in europe it's like in in germany well in europe it's like one of the highest ranked clubs right wow when you go to the front how you get into the club is based on like your energy really imagine so the so the bouncer can sit there and be like yo you don't look i imagine now you must perform <laughs> for the bouncer now you're like oh come on give me a chance and, I can't. And you, can't, you can't take any photos you can't record any videos that's crazy and that was the craziest show and we couldn't even record it it was in wow. germany we were in uh in berlin germany what's the what's the what's the the issue with the recording thing because of the i think it's the art in the venue and a lot of people be beyond some stuff in oh, venue, okay. so they can't really so put it out they're protecting they're protecting the people doing funny things 100%. basically hey you know how these <laughs> things go you know how these things go all right so we've got more tunes coming up with shane eagle like i said if you want to ask him any questions 0825505151 that is the whatsapp line you can also call 089110505 i'm about to bump uh, questions Ooh. by shane eagle give us a bit of a breakdown about this tune um this is one of my favorites, hands down. Yeah. Like. Why? 
just the when that beat drops uh-huh. it's just too hot you know really and um one of the other things about it is um that's just hot man just play that <laughs> so he's one of those he's probably, he's probably one of those guys who bumps his own album in the car and he's like yo who is this this dude's <laughs> hot man gotta get him in studio <laughs> <laughs> Questions by Shane. Hey, try- Shane Eagle with questions on 5FM. We're still hanging out with him in studio. My name is Miss Cosmo. We're still here on the stir up. And of course, we're trying to take some of your questions. They are flowing in thick and fast on the WhatsApp line. So let's get straight to it, shall we? Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I uh, just wanted to know if you would ever, or is there a possibility of collabing with J. Cole and Bass? in one track. Ibi here from Cape Town. That's Ibi from Cape Town asking, is there a possibility of you collaborating with Bass or J. Cole? Just for him, I'm going to make that collab. Oh, not for yourself. Nah, just Don't for lie. Him. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know you want that feature. Nah, 100%. Huh? You know, um, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Let's are, you, are you massaging the right people to make sure it happens? I'm... Um, you see, massaging is like... It's, <laughs> it's the wrong shit, word. You know? I, it's the wrong word, but yeah, it's definitely in the pipes. I hear you, I hear you. All right, we've got another question coming through on the WhatsApp. Hey, yo, Igo. It's Boy Chilva here, man, from Virginia, first state. Miss Cosmo, hello. Yeah. Hi. Hey, yo, Shane, I got a question for you, man. What up, what up, what On Dark Moonflower, what was the hardest song to do on the mixtape? Genuine, like the hardest song that you have to do. Yeah. Nice, that's a nice question. That's Which was the question. hardest song for you to put together? Um, I think the most difficult song to put together in terms of the amount of takes that it took was uh, Let Go featuring the Hicks. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't the most difficult one to make. It just took the, the longest. The longest to make. But the one that was the most difficult, I would say, is Evolve with Patrick XXP. Because I had a, you know, that song is based around Screamo and like pushing it towards like a, a like a rock element mixed okay. with like trap. So oh, I that's why you got a, Patrick, okay. You know what I'm okay. saying? So I had to take myself outside my comfort zone because mm. if you listen to like we actually screaming like maniacs <laughs> on that song. <laughs> but it's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is that is that why you kind of decided to work with him on that tune because he wanted to cr- kind of create a different mm-hmm. sound 100 percent, 100 percent, and he's he's got that on lock he's in his, his own lane yes and you know i'm also inspired by so many different things and it's kind of the same frequency so i was like yo perfect let me hit him up and with playing around with different sounds how do you find that kind of fits in with the project that you're actually working on at that time because from mm-hmm. the Shane we knew on the hustle to who you are now, yeah. two completely different people. 100%. Even, yeah. even when I watch the clips, I'm like, who's this guy? <laughs> this huh? Bob guy. <laughs> I remember the first time I met Shane, I'll tell you that story just now, but <laughs> answer the question. <laughs> um, what was the question again? Um, I was wondering about your sound and how you actually put these sounds together oh, for every project. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I was, that's what makes this one a mixtape because mm. of the different sounds. Okay. I think when it's an album, it's all going to be synced. Like oh, to kind of tell a story. Yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying? So this one is definitely like different sounds coming together and then that's what makes it a yes, mixtape. Yes, yes. Yes. So Shane from The Hustle. I remember when um, there was like a media day or something that they were having at the house when you guys were still kind of like, you had obviously been inducted into the house to say, okay, you guys are the top 10, you're still there, you're on the show. So now everybody kind of had to meet like everybody else who had been invited for the day to kind of know about the show. (laughs) Here comes this guy, so slick, he wants to talk to all the girls. He's just like, no, I just gotta make sure I speak to everybody with that smooth, you know, vibe just to make sure. That's how you get what you want. That's, that's how you. That's how you make. That's how you go further. Oh know? my gosh! Is that is that how you make a first impression? You know. So it got to a point where all the ladies were just like, "I but that one, that one." He seems to be giving us all the same line. What did he say to you? He <laughs> said that to me too. And then we all put it together. We're like, "This one is gonna be a problem on the show," and it definitely was a problem. But then you wouldn't be sitting here right now if you didn't have that confidence. Mm-hmm. If you didn't have. Mm-hmm. That, that 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 assertion to kind of take yourself right. forward. 100%. How are you feeling about that transition from TV to mm. Shane now? I mean, you even did the whole TV presenting mm-hmm. thing, which was also completely different to right. you just doing music. Yeah, I think it's because, you know, first of all, I'm a Gemini. So there's like already so many different sides to me that I'm always like facing, you know, some some days you might just get me on the 
on the chill Gemini side, then you might get me on the eagle side, which mm. is that, you know, assertive person, the confident person, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, but also, I, you know, when I was on the hustle, I was about 18, I just turned 19. I was 18 going on 19, so it's like, you know, just a kid, like, finding himself also, you mm. know what I'm saying? Like, just growing, because, you know, for, when people see you for the first time, they just probably think he's like, 23, 24, so they don't have any like background, yes. you know what I mean? So it's like I, I was taking my time to kind of find myself to get to a point where, okay, this is what I want to do for the rest of my oh. life, you know what I mean? And the TV thing was was very dope. I was very um, blessed enough to be able to, you know, have a platform because straight after the, the TV thing, I had dropped Yellow and then I had got the award and then, you know, so it was kind of like a snowball effect. Yeah. So steps, so everybody who's listening, it's like take your time, you know? to find yeah. where you want to be and who you want to be you know? that's so true mm -hmm. do you see yourself going back to TV no <laughs> you answered so quickly no. I'm on TV all, I'm on TV all the time Ooh, we ain't like trying that. to see you Shane yeah. please uh, please alright so we're still taking some of your questions on the WhatsApp line as well as the phone line 0825505151 hanging out with Shane Eagle dropping tunes from his ooh, I almost said album from his mixtape Dark Moon Flower so here's one of the tunes that Shane said is one of his favorite on the mixtape. So check it out, Whispering to the Moon featuring the Hicks. Like I said, taking some of your WhatsApps, 082-550-5151. 5505151 they are flooding in we might not be able to get to everybody but we'll try and get to what we can okay just before we get to the questions mm. just because you didn't come to the private listening sessions for the dark moon flower oh i, I knew i gift. knew I he was gonna give gift. me heat about this <laughs> So this is for you. Oh, Exclusive. thank you. Look yeah. at that. No, no one else got that, so that's for you. What do you mean no one else got one? I saw, I saw Viju was wearing a jacket. It and wasn't it was, this one. Ooh, and it's orange. And it's it's, for you. it's a medium, but I'm going to wear it anyway. I'm going <laughs> to turn it into a dress. <laughs> thank you so much, Shane. Yes. Got you. All right, so uh, special things happening in studio, definitely. But uh, also special things happening on the WhatsApp line. Let's get to those questions. Hi, Shane, what's up? My name is Cosmo. Um, I'm all the way to from Canon and C, Eastern Cape. Just want to say to Shane, uh, big ups, man. I love the song with, with Lord from Dreamville. I love that song. It's my favorite. Um, and I just want to say, brah, maybe next day when you're not busy, please come to Eastern Cape, brah. Maybe a young tour or something. I missed you when you were you were in Port Elizabeth last year for Yale. My boy. Pick ups, man. Yes. I got you, man. Um, that up one song with Lutz is also one of my favorites, and we definitely come into your city. Don't sweat it, my guy. So people are asking about the tour. I had a couple of WhatsApps as well of people texting and saying uh -huh. we want a tour, we want a tour. Yeah. Uh, I remember how well you did with the Yellow tour. Mm -hmm. And did you expect it to go that well? Yeah, we did. Really? We planned. Ooh. <laughs> We hey, when I and so. your confidence, you know, sometimes so, <laughs> I can't even ask you a question. You're just like, yes, we're out here <laughs> killing it. Huh? So, so the Dark Moon Flower tour is coming, mm. but people have to wait a little bit. There's going to be a whole bunch of shows that we're going to be doing mm. before, which is very, you know, Dark Moon Flower. But the tour, because there's so many international artists involved, it's going to take, you know, a bit of time to get them over to South Africa. Okay. So the tour is coming. Nice. It's going to be a big tour, uh, but we're doing some shows. So we'll pop it into all the cities before then. Nice. So, yeah. Is that like a 2020 thing? Yep. Okay, For cool. Sure, yeah. All right, let's get to the next question. Uh, this is this is Maju from Sharpeville. What up, Maju? I was just wondering, what's what's his creative process like? Or does he just jump on a beat, or does he write something before, and does he takes take time to like think about what he wants the song to be about? I just want to know that. Thank you. That's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think usually for me it just it starts with um, usually it starts with the beat you know like so the producer and my producers know me very well so they'll, they'll start with the beat and then I'll start with the melody try and figure out the melody first and then I'll get to the meaty parts of you know writing the verse down but as of late I've just been um, recording the first idea that comes to my head so I don't like to write it and then keep it for a few weeks because then it you know kind of gets stale so right now I get a beat I get the first idea and I put it down you know so Nice. Yes. All right, we've got one more question coming through. 
Is it off? Oh, okay. Uh, so we're not getting to that question. But um, I think for my kind of curiosity obviously things have kind of changed um your career is obviously taking you to a point where you won yourself a summer did you expect to get that mm, no nah, i didn't I'll for be. the first time i gotta know <laughs> yes i knew it was coming <laughs> um because you know if you're an upcoming musician you always well i don't know how it is now but the world will always be like that yeah and when i say be like that i mean rigged yes you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of politics that goes into winning an award and me being indie at the time. I'm still indie now, but at that at that moment, it was more like because I'm not involved in, you know, the bigger labels in SA, yes. maybe they won't give it to me. Yeah. So to see them give that to me was, you know, um, like a confirmation to be like, I. Yes, I know? hear that. Mm. And I think you're playing, you're, you're going indie speaks so much to the fact that these things are possible. You just obviously have to kind of work at the music and making it that right, much more right. pure. Mm. And your direction of obviously always trying to go towards streaming as opposed to being um, on number one on radio charts right. has never been your focus. Yeah. Why not? Um, I think when you're approaching, you know, certain songs and certain um, albums and stuff like that, it, it's kind of what you focus on. I've never sat and, like, focused on making, like, a radio song, mm. you know, because that will sound like a radio song, you know what I mean? Mm. So I think, like, hits, like, radio hits, those will come with my career, you know, when I am when I make, like, certain music. But I don't tie myself down and be like, yo, I'm going to make a radio song. I rather focus on, you know, my direct access to my fans, you know, the direct link to the shows, the direct link to the merchandise, you know what I'm saying? And that, that gets it popping for real. All right, cool. We're still hanging out with Shane Eagle in studio. We'll be back in a moment right after this. Shane Eagle with Black on 5FM coming off of his mixtape Dark Moon Flower. We're still hanging out with him in studio. We're taking some of your questions on the WhatsApp line. What it is? Uh, Bongini from Peter Marisburg. I was wondering uh, what were your biggest challenges in running your own independent record label? Let me get my man V to answer that question. Oh. <laughs> but that's your question. All right. Um, huh? What was the one of the most difficult things about being independent? Yes. Um, finance. Because you have to make the right yourself. Yes. Yeah. It's always the biggest problem. Capital is always the biggest problem. Because you need to pay for music videos. You need to pay for studio time. You need to pay for producers. You need to pay for so many things. Packaging, distribution. That and people don't it. realize. And then when they find out of the music, you say, <laughs> why are you doing that? I was trolling. <laughs> but at the same time, I wasn't trolling. But at the same time, I was. Okay. Because I understand both sides. Okay. You know, so the first side is, is more so like, this is what I was saying. I was saying, People say that they don't have enough money to buy an iPhone to get Apple Music. Mm. Totally get it. But with the same amount of money you use to buy data to stream it on an illegal site, you could have downloaded the app Spotify and then get the music for free because mm. it's free. It's, exactly. ju it's just more so an understanding, you know. But at the same time, I know how people's minds think. So I say, yo, don't stream my music on Fagaza. Mm. What does everyone do? They do it anyway. So as long as you're streaming my music. I can't, but then you can't count. You can't account for those streams. They pull up to the shows. They do pull up to the they shows, but the at, show. at some point, for me, is how? Okay, I guess it's maybe the tour. That's it's, probably it's, how it's, you'll it's, get the money you know, back. But it's give take, mm. you know, because I understand, especially in South Africa, I've actually been working on an idea to help solve that, you know, um, and and it's it's a it's a it's a cool idea that actually Ebro and I spoke about when we went to Robbie Ridge Ebro from Hot 97 we um, we went to Robbie Ridge where I'm from and he gave me an idea of how to change that because of that very same thing you know uh. and and it's main, mainly because you know people Kokasi they don't really have internet they don't yes. have Wi-Fi they don't have those things so it's a problem for them to get the other stuff you know yeah so we need to sort that problem out first hey, he's also going to be president watch out now all right we've got another question for Shane uh, this is Blueberry Valley here coming from Port Elizabeth um, was Ride Dolo inspired by Kid Cudi with um, Mr. Solo Dolo yes it was good call really yeah smart why specifically it's the um, 
the heaven in your eyes bar. That's yes. what he's talking about. You know, Cuddy uh, always plays with melodies and he inspires me. So that song was inspired by Cuddy actually. Beautiful. Which is crazy. I don't think anyone, even my own team was like, really? <laughs> like, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's that's the element of music is always kind of taking inspiration from other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but do you sample a lot in some of your music? I don't think mm-hmm. you do. No, well, I do, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do sample. Um, but I also like to create things from scratch. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, but sampling is is you know it's cool because sometimes you like your your favorite stuff. But it's just when I sample music, you can't really tell where it came from. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? But then, uh, but then, wouldn't you argue that sometimes sampling something kind of goes to a bit of a waste then having to pay for pay the royalties? But then people don't actually recognize where you sampled it from. It, you see, it depends what you're trying to do. You know what okay. I'm saying? If you sample a, a record, just make sure that song's gonna be big. Ah. So, you know what I mean? So you can make your stuff back. Yes. You know? Because okay. if you sample and then, you know, clearance issues and they, they want you to pay for all of that and you're not going to make it back, then don't do it. That's so or true. Or sample and drop it for free. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and there you are. All right. So we're still hanging out with Shane Eagle in studio. We're still going to be taking some of your WhatsApps. We do have to take a short break. And of course, we are making our way to the local top five. We have a brand new number five and a brand new number one for this week. We're going to do a bit of a recap with last week's number one after this. Stino Litueni on this one called Run on 5FM representing Bloom with this one as number one for the local top five. Last week, we do have a brand new number one for this week. We're going to check it out in a moment. Still in studio with Shane Eagle. We're going to wrap up in a moment, but obviously taking some of your WhatsApp, some of your questions. And of course, uh, you know, some of your comments showing love for Shane and his brand new mixtape, Dark Moon Flower. Let's go. Yo, what's up, Shane? What's up, Miss Cosmo? It's Layers all the way from Soweto. Uh, Shane, I just, I just want to know, man, like you, you doing this whole thing independent, you have your own label, I just want to know, are you considering signing artists right now or in the near future? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you need to pass that baton, huh? You were talking about that a little bit earlier. Yeah, huh? um, I'm only willing to sign someone if they can run quicker than me. What? And, and I, mean, I mean that, like, not physically, but when it comes to the mic. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So if I see someone... Who I can be like, okay, this person can take it, you know. Is it have to be better than me? But young guys are also still kind of learning their way through the industry. But you, but you can see it, you know what I'm saying? You can see it like immediately if they want it, if they're hungry, if they're skilled. Because I'm not looking for someone who's as good as me at this point. It's more so finding someone who you can see has room to grow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? This person has room to be one of the greatest artists, and you can see that from the beginning. Okay. So you got to be great. So where are you going to find this person? Are you holding auditions or what? I think, I think I'm going to find this person in Rabi Ridge. Okay. But in like 20 years time. Only then? I don't think they're born yet. I, okay, this one's being difficult. Anyway, next question. Hi, Miss Cosmo. Hi, Shane Eagle. My name is Nairobi. So my question is, because I believe that he is an independent artist. He's not signed to any label. So now my question is, how does he balance the two? How does he balance the, 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 the business side of things and also being creative at the same time? How do you balance the two? Because I believe that this is a very important lesson for artists and people who are coming into the industry that you must be responsible and have ownership of your things, you know, whether it be material, mm-hmm. whatever. So how does he balance the two? Thank you very much. Nice Congratulations one. on the next time. Hey. I love the title. This says a lot about his current state of mind. Thank you so much. Thank you. The ladies are listening. Yep. Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, as as an artist or as a person, you know, you just one human being. You can't do everything by yourself. Mm. You know. So I think key to that is is getting a good team around you. You know, if you're an artist, if you um, whatever whatever art you do, if you're a photographer, if you're a DJ, if you're a, a painter, if you're a skater and you're trying to do something full time and really go far with it, you need to build a team around you. And then, you know, like that, everyone has their role to focus on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when you build a good team, everyone has, you know, their job to focus on. And that kind of keeps everything flowing at the same time. And when I am creating, I'm tucked away at creating. But when I'm done creating, it also allows me to focus on my business. That's so true. Mm. Nice. Okay, so something else that you kind of achieved with while being independent um, was obviously doing one of the firsts for South Africa, getting your artwork yeah, up on, on, on uh, Times Square in New York. Yeah. 
How did you get that done? That was fire. Um, met my team, you know, Vaughn mm -hmm. and whatever strings we had to pull. We can't, you know, obviously give away the obviously, the keys, but it was just a, a beautiful moment to to let people know. Okay, this thing is out now. Yes, it was like a worldwide release. Yes, of all the artists featured, you know. And initially, I just wanted to do a billboard in Sanson. I got one in New York. Nice. Are you getting the one in Sanson? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we, 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 You're we, not we, sure. We, we could probably do that for like the release of like some of the videos. Yes. Like that. But I mean, for the initial drop, it was yes. it was cool to do it where, you know, people, could, some of the biggest artists in the world to do it, you know? Especially did it, get, did it like, get a good reaction with it being up on that billboard? Man, it was it was so crazy because, you know, everybody was, was hitting us to figure out how we did that. Yes, of you course. Know, and know now everybody saying? wants in. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make your own connections. You know what I mean? Um, all right, so the last question that I have for tonight, before I let you go, before I thank you for spending this evening with us, is uh, the one question that I think everybody has on their minds. Yeah. When are you buying a ring? Because <laughs> you've been, you've been, hey, 13, 13, you've been with us since you were 13. You're like what, you're 28 now? 27? 28. How old are you now? God damn. <laughs> How old are you now? 23. 23? Yes. Sure. Okay, my bad. Sorry. It's because you, obviously all your work with speeds and stuff like that, so I kind of put you at the same kind of age, um, age group. My bad. Do my, bad. my bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Uh, well, like you said, you don't really know how old anybody is because you uh, just kind of pin it to whatever you think you are. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been 10 years. Yeah, it has. When are you... Well... You know... Um, the one question doesn't have an answer for... It's, it's, it's on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we'll let you take your time on that. We'll let you take your time on that. Thank you so much for coming through to the store up. Thank you for Blessing us with your me. presence because we know you're a busy guy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm sure you're jetting off to some somewhere amazing in the next couple of weeks or right. so. Mm -hmm. uh, leave us with something. What's next? What else can we look forward to? When is the tour? Obviously, right. you said next year, but yeah. when can we kind of wait for it? Everybody just needs to wait for all the videos that are coming from the project because I just wanted to give everyone some time to kind of sink their teeth into the album so mm -hmm. they get familiar with the music before the videos come so videos are coming out tours coming out um, and a lot of dope dope collaborations will be coming that weren't on the project nice mm -hmm. okay cool well keep on following Shane uh, obviously you can catch him on all social media Shane underscore eagle is where it's at everywhere correct right, right. And uh, maybe you can also add more pressure to the homie and tell him to buy that drink, because damn. Sunday, 7 p.m. 10 p.m. I flew my mom out of Paris. She used to stay on the street. I haven't been home in a while, so I spent a crib on my teeth. Exclusive.